So Tulsi Gabbard, uh, as many of you know, is running in 2020. She is a presidential candidate. She is considered as one of the lower tier candidates that probably doesn't have very good of a chance. And that's mainly because she is opposed and hated by the establishment so virulently that they're just going to make sure she doesn't like they're going to do to Tulsi Gabbard what they did to what they did to Bernie Sanders in 26. So they're, so what they're doing to Tulsi Gabbard right now, they did to Bernie Sanders in 2016. So it's just a redux of that, but for a different candidate. And it's ironic that she's a woman and a woman of color and it's not seen as sexist all of a sudden now too. So that's a very, very big irony. Nobody has a problem attacking this woman of color, but if you know, they, you know, anybody even attacked Hillary, it was seen as sexist. Apparently this isn't sexist anymore. So anyway, um, so the, this, this is, so this absurd article was released, um, was put out by the Daily Beast and it was written by Lachlan Marque and Sam Stein. And Lachlan Marque, by the way, is somebody that used to work for a publication called Newsbusters. And they were also, well, their, their parent company was the Media Research Center and Lachlan Marque was writing for them. And this was actually a publication that was super right wing and it still exists they're still in existence and i used to cover a blog um i was right before I, my the name of my blog was called busting newsbusters and it would cover a lot of the um articles where people like lachlan Marque would put out articles talking about how the media is super liberal so it was just a it was a website that was whining about the liberal media all the time basically that's what it was centered around so all of a sudden this guy Lachlan Marque went from covering you know how horrible the liberal media is to how to so, so to writing for the daily beast which is like basically your typical like the resistance uh, pro resistance kind of publication out there so anyway so <clears throat> the title of this article is tulsi gabbard's campaign is being boosted by putin apologists wow so as usual typical russia gate russia uh paranoia bullshit so the sub headline says the hawaii congressman is quickly becoming the top candidate for democrats who think the russian leader is misunderstood <gasps> Yeah, because <laughs> Vladimir Putin is such a misunderstood guy. He's totally a lovable character. I honestly don't know if he is. But anyway, um, maybe he is. I have no idea. <clears throat> so, yeah, tell Putin I want my check too. Yeah, seriously. I mean, <laughs> that guy, he's obviously been doing, we, we've obviously been doing his shilling for so long, we still haven't gotten a single dime out of them. Just like all the people that say, you know, that talk about how fucking what is it uh george soros like runs all the he runs all the like left wing like or not left wing but like liberal ish you know faux progressive you know publications and you know backs all those different like near attendance and you know media matters and stuff like that so obviously he loves hillary clinton and shit i mean i think there is some grain of truth to that but i don't think it's i i think it's like i think it's a lot more it's a lot more just about like like him just like heading a bunch of like Soros just heading a bunch of organizations that are just like it's kind of like the Koch brothers you know just heading a bunch of organizations that are just like very influential and just like put out information to people but like I don't think they're like creating bots and stuff but hey who knows that's just my opinion I mean like I think but I think it's different if you're considering like David David Brock. So if you're talking talking about David Brock and stuff, there's definitely people like Brock bots and you know those like people that were whatever paid million dollars to like you know defend Hillary Clinton or whatever. But yeah. Um, but anyway, let's. I've gone off on a tangent there a little bit. Sorry about that. But anyway, so let's read the article here. It says. Hawaii Representative Tulsi Gabbard's campaign for the Democratic presidential nomination is being underwritten by some of the nation's leading Russo files. 
Donors to her campaign in the first quarter of the year included Stephen F. Cohen, a Russian studies professor at New York University and prominent Kremlin sympathizer, Sharon Tennyson, a vocal, Trump, uh, vocal Putin supporter who nonetheless found herself detained by Russian authorities in 2016, and an employee of the Kremlin-backed broadcaster RT, who appears to have donated under the alias Goofy Grapes. Okay. And it says, Gabbard is one of her party's more Russia-friendly voices in an era of deep democratic suspicion of the country over its efforts to tip the 2016 election in favor of President Donald Trump. Her financial support from prominent pro-Russian voices in the U.S. is a small portion of the total she's raised, but it still illustrates the degree to which she deviates from her party's mainstream on such a contentious and high-profile issue. Data on Gabbard's uh, financial supporters only covers the first three months of the year. In that time, her campaign received just over $1,000 from Cohen, arguably the nation's leading intellectual apologist for Russia for Russian President Vladimir Putin. Um, Ten uh, Tennyson, which is referring to... What was that person? Sharon Tennyson. <clears throat> Tennyson donated to Gabbard no fewer than five times, eventually reaching the per cycle individual contribution limit in mid-March. Tennyson and her group, the Center for Citizen Initiatives, Initiatives have long worked to improve U.S.-Russia relations, in part by organizing junkets to the nation both before and after the fall of the Soviet Union. She's also been an outspoken Putin supporter, dubbing him a, quote, straightforward, reliable an exceptionally incentive, I'm sorry, inventive man in a column last year. Tennyson wrote that column in spite of her detention in Russia two years earlier when she was accused of attempting to covertly advance U.S. foreign policy interests in the country. Okay, well, then, uh, okay, well, if she was pushing U.S. interests, then, but then she's also a Putin apologist, so, I mean, she was probably just pushing for, like, peace efforts, but, okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, it says, Gabbard also got a $1,000 contribu contribution contribution from Goofy Grapes, who listed his or her occupation as comedian and employer as, re as redacted tonight. A current events show, comedy show on Russian state-backed broadcaster RT. So that show's host, comedian Lee Camp, told the Daily Beast that the person who made the donation is no longer an active member of Redacted Tonight, and separately, it is a company policy to not donate to political campaigns. Camp, for his part, routinely promotes the Russian government line on, world, on major world affairs, most notably the invasion of Ukraine, political unrest in Venezuela, and the Syrian civil war. God forbid. God forbid you don't push, you don't push for overthrowing Venezuela and you don't push for this Syrian, the narrative that you know, Bashar al-Assad gassed his own people. To the extent that those donors toe the Kremlin line on issues such as Syria, they are more squarely in line with Gabbard's own views than those of any other Democratic presidential candidate as a member of Congress. Um, yeah, as a, yeah, so than those of any other Democratic presidential candidate. As a member of Congress, she has personally uh, met with Syrian President, President Bashar al-Assad and cast out on widely accepted reports that he deployed nerve gas weapons against his own people. Gabbard has also been one of the few prominent Democrats in the country to downplay the findings of special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into Russia's meddling in the 2016 election. The report found no evidence of a conspiracy by the Trump campaign to support that meddling, but it did provide extensive details of that malicious influence <laughs> campaign and of the ca Trump campaign's efforts to impede special, count special counsel's investigation. Um, so, I mean, the rest of it just details a bunch of people that, talking about how a bunch of people are pushing in Congress are pushing for, so people that are in Congress with Gabbard are pushing for more investigations and more Russiagate fear-mongering. It says, but the, but the list of controversial donors to Gabbard is detailed by our filings with the Federal Commission. Federal, Federal, Federal Election Commission doesn't end there. 
Oh my God, Susan Sand Susan Sarandon donated to her. Holy shit, that's terrible. God forbid Susan Sarandon donates to her. Can't have that. She gave uh, Gabbard five hundred dollars. Ali Ali Amin, the president of Primex International, wrote two checks of twenty eight hundred dollars apiece. Um, he runs the F International Food Distribution Company. He pled guilty to 2015 charges that he transferred more than $17 million between Iran and the United States as part of an, as part of an unlicensed business transaction. Okay. Another person is Colin Tiernan, a spokesman for Gabbard. Oh, I'm sorry. It says, uh, I'm sorry. It says, uh, after being asked about these donations, Colin Tiernan, a spokesman for Gabbard, said the campaign would be returning them. Tiernan also noted that Amin had given to fellow 2020 contender Kamal Harris. Uh, Kamal Harris's Senate campaign in 2018. Ian Sams, a spokesman for Harris, said the Senate refunded Amin's donation in 2018. Um, that's, uh, that's it. The, I don't know, the rest of it is... Uh, it's, Says so she mounted an unorthodox bid for the Democratic nomination. She only had one paid staffer, blah, blah, blah. There's another part. Um, okay, so let me just read this other, this last two paragraphs here. It says, Gabbard's media strategy has also been counterintuitive for a national Democrat. She has made several appearances on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, um, which, while being one of the most popular platforms on that medium, is a haven for Trump-supporting guests. Gabbard also is among the few Democrats who has a captive audience on Fox News, owed, owed largely, to, largely to her willingness to criticize Barack Obama, as well as her party's party, as well as her party's planks on both Russia and foreign policy in general. Tucker Carlson, a primetime host on that network, has publicly defended her. God forbid. Though she has not courted their support, some prominent figures in the white nationalist community have flocked in Gabbard's direction. David Duke, the former KKK leader, has heaped praise on her, and on several occasions, uh, Richard Spencer, the avowed white supremacist, has tweeted favorably about her, including once again this week. <sighs> okay. Finally done with that bullshit article. So, yeah, that last part was ridiculous. This whole fucking article is absurd. But that last part, trying to tie her to white nationalists and white supremacists and all that shit is such bull. It's such garbage, man. That is typical fear-mongering establishment narrative. I mean, that's what they do. This is what they do. This is the kind of garbage they push because they need to scare you about how Tulsi Gabbard is going to take over the fucking world if she or take over the country if she's president and you know if she gets praised by a bunch of kka people that means she's automatically like that means she's automatically like she loves their support she doesn't even want their support they did they mention here it's as though she has not courted their support yeah well she hasn't not only has she not courted but she denied when when uh David Duke, I think, posted something on Twitter about how much he supports Tulsi Gabbard or said he supports her for president or something or loves the, the things that she says. He, she said, I don't want your fucking support. Get the hell out of here. I don't, want to have, I don't want to have nothing to do with you. So I don't support you supporting me. So <laughs> piss off, basically, is what she said. I don't know what response she gave to Richard Spencer, but I'm sure it was similarly, similarly chastising and, you know, not wanting to, anything to do with him. Um... And then the other part, talking about Joe Rogan has hosted a bunch of right-wing people on his, you know, a bunch of right-wing people on his uh, podcast. He's also had a bunch of left-wing people. Joe Rogan has hosted Lee Camp, who priorly mentioned, who was prior, who was mentioned prior in this uh, article. Lee Camp is a big-time left-winger. Abby Martin is a big-time left-winger. Uh, Kyle Kalinske has been on there multiple times, host of Secular Talk. Jimmy Dore has been on there at least two or three times. These are all left-wingers. Uh, who's another one? There was another person who was a left-winger. Uh, well, I know Jenk Uger has been on there. I know Anna Kasparian has been on there multiple times. Jenk only went once. He's from TYT, obviously. Anna Kasparian as well from TYT. They, they went on a total of three times. She went on twice. Um... They haven't been on there a while, but they did go on there. Um, I mean, yeah, it just seems that yeah, it seems that. And I'm, I'm I'm a big fan of Joe Rogan. I am. I love the fact that Tulsi went on there. She's awesome. She's awesome for you know putting her putting her 
reputation on the line for going on there. Somebody mentions that Chris Hedges also went on there. Chris Hedges, somebody I mentioned earlier who I follow. He's a great, he's a great reporter, um, great journalist. Has you know covered a lot of you know issues that pissed off the establishment as well, which is great. Um, yeah, so I mean, this is just typical fear mongering from the media. Um, I don't really have much to say other than the fact that it's just comical how the media just keeps wanting to scare people with this McCarthyism and anybody that stands up for anything that is not that is not with the establishment and is not pushing for more wars basically, you're automatically dubbed a Putin apologist, you're dubbed, you know, a, a Russian agent, you're dubbed a you know, a, a t what is it, a dictator lover, whether you're a dictator lover, you know, you love uh, Bashar al-Assad, you love, um, um, what's his name, um, Nicolas Maduro, you love, um, I'm sure people are going to start throwing in um, Iran's, you know, supreme leader, which is Ali Khamenei, I'm sure they're going to be throwing in that, that, in, that in there. Uh, I'll be happy to, at, at some point, I'm going to be happy to be dubbed a an Iranian puppet or an Iranian apologist or an Iranian agent, considering the fact that I am Iranian. So, all those other Russians out there that are called Russian bots and being Russian, I'm sure I'm going to get similar treatment, so that should be fun. Um... Yeah, Hamas is another one. Yeah. So, I mean, the media is such a joke these days. And part of the reason why I'm doing this podcast is because I'm I'm trying to tie I'm I'm doing my very very small tiny part, my putting a very very small tiny effort in trying to turn that tide in how this and how the media covers these these issues in such horrible fashion pushing for endless wars pushing for you know for example more deregulation of wall street pushing for you know you know the, the healthcare industry and the pharmaceutical industry and the insurance industries to screw us all over but not pushing for you know for college to be free like it is in in you know in every other industrialized nation uh you know as uh, obviously the same you know medicare for all you know universal health care all that stuff all this you know all this shit is just i'm doing my best to be a part of that movement to push against to push back against that because i i know i can't do it alone that's why there's great people like kyle kalinsky jimmy Dore, tim black uh, Humanist Report, Mike from Humanist Report, Michael Figueredo, um, you know, all my other activists out there. Uh, hippie activist, thank you for commenting. I've seen you on Twitter. You do a great job. Thank you for commenting on my, you know, on my podcast. Um, all the other people that are tweeting about my podcast, you know, promoting it for me and letting them, letting me tag them so they can watch my segments and everything on YouTube. I really appreciate that. So it's like I'm trying to do my effort in, in, in kind of making sure that at least in some case we have a voice that speaks for us. So just like Bernie Sanders and Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard and, and all those people, they're speaking on behalf of us in, in, in government you know people like me and all the other people that i mentioned we want to speak on behalf of those other people that are out there so all the voters out there that don't have a podcast or don't you know don't have some form of you know they don't like you know they're not the kind of people that are like speaking out on social media like we do you know we speak on behalf of them so all the people that are silenced and not spoken for we're speaking for you so hopefully i'm doing a good job hopefully you know, all, you, you guys love all those other guys that I mentioned, all those other journalists and podcasters and hosts and everything that are doing. They're doing their due diligence to do exactly the same thing. Hopefully, those those people can be appreciated by a bigger audience than just us. Hopefully, so that's that's my hope. Hopefully, we'll have that re revolution and people will finally start taking us much more seriously than they do instead of watching msnbc cnn you know fox news and all those other bullshit mainstream media outlets politico the hill you know new york times that even though i'm quoting these you know articles from these sources i that doesn't even take them seriously it's just to put that out there so we're coming man we're coming we're going to be, the progressives are going to make, the progressives, leftists, leftists, socialists, communists, Marxists, 
we're we're going to be making a run here you know hopefully bernie sanders becomes president and we can you know start a movement that's going to make a big impact and yes uh jen Uger is going to have to make a much better effort um uh, being much more prog progressive as he's been pushing a lot of russia gate anti-putin bullshit i mean he's still pro bernie but you know He's pushing a lot of the Russiagate stuff that I can't stand, and I've become less and less of a viewer of TYT, even though I used to be an intern for them. I applied for jobs for TYT back when they were decent, but as soon as they started pushing them for that Russiagate shit, and they started, um, and I heard they got like a $20 million investment from like a pro-Hillary surrogate or something, and then I was just like, damn, I don't know if I want to work for TYT. So, like, they're, they're, TYT is like the mainstream media, they're like the, the MSM of, like, online media, you know, they're the mainstream of online media, and they're not, that's not good, because you can't trust them, you know, that's such as how it is. So, I have, I have less trust over TYT these days than I used to, for sure.